Hello everyone, my name is Peter Detterlein, and I'd like to talk about the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that's coming up on December 21st, 2020, why it's important, and how best to observe it. First, let's begin with a little background information. A conjunction is nothing more than just a grouping of celestial objects. This happens quite a bit. The moon catches up with a planet that's in conjunction. And that happens every month. Sometimes planets can group together and then they're in conjunction too. Or they can be in conjunction with a bright star. And sometimes all together. Here's an interesting conjunction of four objects I took a photo of. We have Venus, Jupiter, the bright star Spica, and our waxing crescent moon. Now, that's really kind of neat to see all four of those objects together, but they're still spread out quite a bit. Not all conjunctions are created equally. The closer they are grouped together, the happier you're going to be. Check out this image. We're looking at a conjunction now of Venus and Jupiter, the two brightest planets in the nighttime sky. And that really is spectacular. Beautiful to see. So the closer they are together, the more spectacular and impressive they are. Of course, the most famous conjunction in all of history has to be the star Bethlehem. And since this conjunction is happening close to Christmas, you're going to be certain you're going to hear a lot about the star Bethlehem with this conjunction. We're not sure what the star Bethlehem was actually. There are a lot of different theories and one of them is a grouping of planets or a conjunction. In 7 BCE, one of the theories is that Jupiter and Saturn, the same two you're going to see on December 21st, were in conjunction three times during that period. The closest they got was one degree. Now that's about a pinky width held out at arm's length. The one we're going to see this year is only going to be 0.1 degrees, 10 times smaller on December 21st. That's amazing. If you want to see how much one degree is, check out Jupiter and Saturn around December 12, 13th. It's a little less than a degree, not by much. And then again on January 1st, as they start to separate further and further, they'll be about one degree apart. That's the closest they got for the 7 BCE conjunction. So what can we expect this year? Well, here are the details. You need a low southwestern sky. It's almost exactly southwest. So fine with the sunset, sunsets in the southwest. Take a look at that and make sure you've got a clear, unobstructed view of that area of the sky. You want to start right after sunset, around 5 p.m. It's going to set by 7, but you're going to be happier if it's higher up in the sky. So you want to get started right away at 5 p.m. And get out there a little earlier just to get ready. Preparations? Scout that location. Find the planets early. Don't wait till the 21st. That's really a bad idea. Go out there and check them out each night. It only takes a few moments. Make sure you can see them. Make sure you know what you're looking for. It's going to make all the difference when the 21st comes around. It'll be even that much more impressive as you see them get closer and closer and closer each night. You want to start watching, I would say, by December 16th at the latest, because that's when the moon is going to join the pair. And that's going to be really pretty. So there's a conjunction with the moon, and you could call that a triple conjunction, moon, Jupiter, and Saturn. You want to bring binoculars, or a small telescope, or both. If you don't have binoculars or a small telescope, it's okay. It's still going to be a spectacular view. Just even seeing it visually, think about what the ancients saw a long time ago. This really is spectacular. But let's take a look at how it's going to appear with all three. I write a blog called Night Sky Notebook. Feel free to check that out. 
that will give you all the great happenings in the sky for the month. It will give you conjunctions, eclipses, meteor showers, whatever's going on up there, you can learn about it on that blog. So check that out. Here's one of the pages from that blog. And this is talking about the conjunction with the moon, Jupiter, and Saturn all together. As you can see, the moon's going to be a little closer to them on December 16th, a little further away on the 17th. But this is the start, and you really want to get a good look at them. They're going to be closer than a degree at this point, so it's really going to be pretty to see. Southwest, 5 o'clock it starts, 5.30, 6 o'clock, and getting a little lower and a little tougher to see after that, getting to 6.30 and the 7th. Visually, on the 21st, and again, I highly recommend you keep watching them from the 16th every clear night onto the 21st. The question is, can you separate them with just your eye? They are going to be really close. If you've got teenage eyes, not a problem. You've got this thing covered. If you don't have teenage eyes, it may be a little more of a challenge. It's going to be a little more of a challenge, too, because it's going to be a little lower in the sky. There might be a little haze around. It'll be interesting. Will it look elongated, or will you actually be able to separate them with your eyes? You definitely want to check that out visually, and you definitely want to enjoy that. Just seeing it as one object doesn't mean a whole lot to you, unless you watch this days in advance and watch them getting closer and closer and closer and realize that it's actually two objects sitting almost on top of each other. Binoculars. Most people have binoculars, and you can certainly use them. How well is it going to look? You will see both planets in the binoculars, and they will both look really, really tiny <laughs> right in the center. But binoculars are really good for this. Now, how good they look depends on how good your binoculars are. Do you have giant binoculars you have to have a tripod for, or do you have the handheld kind? Even the held hand kind can really show you some detail, but I really recommend having a tripod to keep it steady, or if you don't, just put the binoculars on like a fence or something to hold them steady in order to see this clearly. You need about 20 magnification in order to make out the rings of Saturn, and that's pretty high magnification for binoculars. So don't be surprised if Saturn just looks like an elongation. It won't even look circular, just look elongated because of the rings, but you might not be able to separate them out. You should be able to see the moons of Jupiter and perhaps one of Saturn, again, depending on the binoculars you use. But binoculars would be fantastic for this, and you definitely want to bring them. Of course, the way to see it is through a telescope. And large telescopes, which really record the planets really well, are not ideal for this. They are close together, but they're not on top of each other. And so high magnification, you will not get both of them in the same telescope view. So if you're using a telescope, you want to practice ahead of time and make sure you can catch them both in. Use a really low power eyepiece so you get a nice wide field. Moderate power is what we're looking at. You want to get both of them in. Jupiter near one edge, Saturn at the other, but still big enough to see detail on them. That's going to be part of the challenge. Can't stress it enough. If you're using a telescope, practice, practice, practice. Make sure you've got this thing down for the 21st. And then keep watching. Jupiter is going to pass Saturn and get a little bit higher in the sky as it's going. It moves faster. And they're going to start to separate. By New Year's, great way to start off 2021. They're going to be about a degree apart. Again, a pinky width held out at arm's length. I hope that answers your questions for this great conjunction. There are just a few more items. Important stuff. Be certain you find them well in advance of the event. I mentioned that a few times. It must be important. Make sure you know what you're looking for. Get out early. The higher they are in the sky, the better the view. The lower, the more haze you have to look through, the more atmosphere, the more distortion. You want them as high as possible. So get out there and be ready at 5 o'clock. 
be careful of low clouds too. You don't want to go out at 6.30 p.m. and find out that they're already in the clouds. They will set by 7, but 7 is not a good time to go out there. They're going to be too low for you to really see. You want to be out there early at 5. And of course, most importantly, enjoy this event. This is an amazing opportunity to see something so special and unique and rare in the sky. Take a look at the beauty of the universe. Enjoy. And of course, always keep looking up.